in the exhibitions department here at the Field Museum. And I'm a member of the organizing committee of our union, Field Museum Workers United, which helps me. We are organizing our union for many reasons. A big one is to ensure that we, the workers, are a priority. This is a landmark institution known worldwide, and we're the backbone of it. But management doesn't prioritize us. They downplay and disparage the importance and efficacy of the union by claiming that they were capable of making necessary changes without the union. Um, uh, last week at an all staff meeting, they preached about transparency and direct communication via a compensation analysis. But when asked if executive salaries would be reflected on the analysis, they said no because it didn't because they didn't deem that information as necessary. They said that the study would help them to determine which positions would be compensated more or less, which, unless the highest paid members of the executive team are taking any pay cuts, I can't imagine who else they were talking about, <laughs> seeing as so many of us are barely scraping by. This is a wealthy institution, but I have many colleagues who work two jobs. I myself often have to rely on side projects to make enough money for groceries. We're voting yes for our union because we deserve so much more for our hard work. Um, just now, along with my colleagues and a delegation of community leaders, we attempted to deliver a letter signed by more than 100 elected officials to the Field Museum CEO, Julian Sickers. The letter makes clear that the elected officials, including U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth, Congressman Chuy Garcia, Congresswoman Delia Ramirez, and many other leaders, strongly support our union and are demanding that Field Museum management stop their anti-union campaign that is trying to intimidate us into voting no in our union next week. Um, we didn't even get a chance to talk to Julian. Instead, we were met uh, at security by his assistant. And I will pass it on to Bob now to uh, describe what happened. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Yeah. yeah. My name is Bob Ryder. I'm president of the Chicago Federation of Labor, Woo! and I'm a very, very aggravated person right now. <laughs> very aggravated because here I am on Park District property with people who put in hard work every day at the Field Museum and a group of other community leaders. We go into the lobby with a letter offered in good faith to have a conversation with the CEO of this institution, and they wouldn't even let us pass security. Now. If we were if we were in some you know suburban corporate headquarters I get it that sort of thing happens every day this is a not-for-profit institution on public property it's disrespectful it's insulting it's degrading and I tell you what these people deserve more and they deserve better and I in every campaign that I see like this run by the boss because believe me these people are the boss they do the same things. They waste a lot of time and a lot of money fighting for people to represent their collective interests. And every time that they sit down and say, we want to have a direct relationship with everybody, guess what? You had that chance and you blew it. <laughs> now these people want to get together because they know that the only thing you want by treating them as individuals is a way to divide them. And we're not going to let it happen because the union is not some sort of murky lurking organization in the background it's the people it's the people that work here and by god what just happened is a perfect example why these people need a union if you want to save money field museum in this effort of these workers to form a union then don't hire lawyers and union busters to fight the union be adults and meet these people where they're at in the workplace talk to them tr treat them with respect and respect the fact that they want to have a union i'm going to hand it off because because i'm still <laughs> just so <laughs> out of my mind upset about what's happened here today i'm going to hand it off to my good friend whose instinct is to be an organizer in every moment of his life and that's senator robert peters <laughs> I'm State Senator Robert Peters of the 13th District. In the heart of the 13th District is the Field Museum. And what makes the Field Museum tick is its workers, it's the people. This is the front door of this city. And how we treat the people who embrace the people coming through that door matters. It matters for how the city is viewed. It's matters for how we're seen in the world. It's how we're seen regionally. It's how we're seen in our neighborhoods. The people who represent this institution isn't the CEO. It is the workers. 
They deserve to be recognized. Their power deserves to be seen and understood. And what you see behind me is that collective action. We signed a letter in the state legislature, a letter, letter we want to hand over to the CEO, calling on them to recognize the union, to work in good faith. And we were rejected when we entered that door. It was a sign of disrespect. It was gross. I want to remind the people who run this institution, the people who call massive donors, who if the massive donor wanted to walk through that door, they would have been given a free pass. They would have been walked right in with the red carpet. Now I want to remind them that what makes the Field Museum and the museum campus special is the working people of this city. And they deserve to make it a career. They deserve to be able to pay for rent easily. They deserve to have food on their table. They deserve to be able to get to work easily without having to worry about what's in their pocket. Be able to have, whether they have kids or family or loved ones that they can take care of. What they don't deserve is poverty wages, That's right. disrespect, and union busting. I'm honored to support these workers because these workers make the Field Museum. These workers make Chicago. And I would like to remind people that Chicago is a union town. That's why right. right. we're standing here. So I'm State Senator Robert Peters, and this is what solidarity looks like. I'm going to turn over to my good friend, Alderman Matt Martin. Thank you, Senator, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm Alderman Matt Martin from the 47th Ward. So privileged, so proud to be here in solidarity with and supporting these wonderful workers here at the Field Museum. And as Robert mentioned, look, the stakes are so incredibly high. We are here uh, on behalf of myself and so many of my colleagues on City Council standing in solidarity, having put this letter together saying, hey, the management here, Julian Siggers, what's going on is not acceptable. Anti-union intimidation tactics, intervention, not something that we're gonna tolerate here. Senator Peter said, we're a union town, we're a union state. We need to make sure that we're reminding folks every single step along the way that that's happening. So when I look at what's happening here, what people are fighting for, myself, the other signers of this letter, but also our constituents, folks all across the city, all across the state, they know that we stand in here in solidarity with workers who are looking to fight for basic rights, fighting for a voice, fighting for better pay, fighting for better um, working conditions, fighting for better benefits, because when we all get better, we all get better. So we need everyone up there in management, the people who wouldn't even come down and have a conversation with us, acknowledge us, to acknowledge the dignity of every single person who's working with them on a daily basis. We need them to not just give lip service to what they purport to be uh, supporting unions. No, you need to stand aside, you need to stay neutral, and let the workers do what they've been doing since November, since December, this month, going into February, saying we are here to organize ourselves to fight for a better life every day, day in and day out. That's why I'm proud to be here standing in solidarity, and that's why we need all of Chicago to stand up and say the same. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Alderman. Yeah. Hi, I'm Reverend C.J. Hawking. I'm the executive director of Arise Chicago. I'm also a United Methodist pastor. I'm very proud to be out here with this company of great leaders in the city of Chicago. By the way, it's about 10 degrees out here, below zero with the wind chill factor. So that shows you what kind of commitment these folks have made to standing up for solidarity. That's right. Whenever workers are faced with oppression, it is a moral imperative that they fight back. And these workers are inspiring and determined and we thank them for standing up for themselves and other workers throughout the museum campuses in Chicago. We applaud their efforts and we know that they will win. Thank you. And now Mr. McNary. Oh. <laughs> well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My mom always told me you can tell what kind of a crowd you're standing in front of by the way they greet friends or by the way they greet strangers when they greet you, so let's try that again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's more like it. You all do my mama proud. My name is William McNary, and as CJ said, I'm the co-director of Citizen Action of Illinois. My sisters and my brothers, I got a question I want to ask you. 
Are you all hungry for justice? Yeah. yeah. Are you all hungry for justice? Yeah. yeah. Are you hungry for justice? Yeah. Let's pull up a chair. Let's eat. <laughs> As citizen action, we say there are three kinds of people. There are people that make things happen. There are people that watch things happen, and then there are people that don't know what's happening. Clearly, the employees of the Field Museum and the museum co-workers uh, United Organizing Committee are in that first category. You are people who make things happen. You are coming together to make this a better employer for yourselves and for your colleagues. That's right. You are coming together to make this a better museum for all those who visit and learn here from all around the world. You are coming together to make this a better community, to make this a better city because you are lifting up and raising the bar for all workers. We all do better when we all do better. But I wonder if management isn't in the last category that I mentioned. People who don't know what's happening. Well, just in case they don't, let's be clear. What's happening is workers are lifting their voices. What's happening is that workers are exercising their rights. What's happening is that workers are building a union. And what happens is that workers are not going to be tricked. We are not going to be divided. That's right. We are not going to be hoodwinked. We are not going to be bamboozled by a boss or any other overpriced attorney into voting against their interests. Woo! You are not only going to be fighting for a contract and wages and benefits, but you're also fighting for your dignity and your self-respect. Right. Now, wages and benefits are negotiable. But dignity and self-respect, that is non-negotiable. Right. We're going to stand together, we're going to stick together, and we're going to stay together. And we are looking forward to you freely casting your votes next week. Now it gives me extreme pleasure to introduce my lifelong friend who I just met a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on, brother, and close us out. Introduce yourself. Thank you. Woo, thank you. Woo. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Antonio Lightfoot, organizing director of the Worker Center for Racial Justice. We're a nonprofit black liberation organization working on workers' rights and criminal justice reform. Um, let's be clear. Uh, this is about power. So that's why I want to thank all of the community leaders out here with us, the elected officials, and most importantly, the Field Museum employees for yeah. being brave enough yes. and bold enough to decide to determine their own destiny. See, we can do this without them. They make this place go. And a world-class institution like the one standing behind me has world-class employees and they should pay them a world-class rate. Woo! That's right. That shouldn't be negotiable, right? This institution brings in a lot of prestige to the city of Chicago, and we should pass that off on to the people who make it go every day. Uh, this is no different from the rights that Dr. King fought for back in the 60s when he was talking about making sure black folks had equal pay, respect on the job. This is no different. That's right. They know if they can take the, they know that a union is power. And if they can take that power or stop us from getting that power, then they can, they can keep their seats at the top. So what we have to do next week is make sure we tell all our friends on Facebook and social media and the employees to come vote for a union. Yeah. They're gonna give us a living wage. No matter what they say, we know they do this all the time. We've been here before. That's right. Yeah. That we know what makes this place go and we gonna get it done next week. Ain't that right? Yeah. 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 It's on your light foot. I'm happy to be here with everybody and we can see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.